I did it! Ha <laughs> ha! Drip feed. Light bulbs for fan speed control. No ECU. There is my ECU. Yes! <laughs> What's up everyone and welcome to Lowered Expectations. Thanks for lowering your expectations and hanging out with me here. I do appreciate it. A few videos back I ran my diesel heater without a fuel pump. Video linked here and in the comments section of that video I had you guys give me all sorts of suggestions on how I could have done that differently or better or things that I could try in the future. Well, I've decided to step it up a notch and in this video we are going to attempt to run my heater without any ECU at all. This isn't going to be a how-to, and I don't recommend that you necessarily do this, but let's give it a go. I'm always quite shocked at how there are so many people in this world who aren't just curious about things. I will often do something in my videos for no other reason than to see what will happen, or to verify what will happen. You don't have to not know what's going to happen to be curious about the results. If you know that you light brake cleaner on fire, it's going to burn and it's going to make a flame. That is pretty obvious, but you don't, that, that doesn't eliminate the curiosity of actually doing it. For me anyway. But I always have people commenting in my comment sections asking why I did something, as though you need a reason to do something. Like, I just, I don't get it. All right, I'm gonna set this somewhere where hopefully the camera can see it. And we'll try to keep track of how long this takes to warm up. I figure it's probably only going to take a couple of seconds to get really hot. Got my lithium ion battery here. Let's uh, connect it and see what happens. Okay, it glows red almost immediately. One, two, three, Four. Yeah, so in like four seconds that is glowing red hot. Let's see what happens if I connect this light bulb in series. There we go. Now the bulb should turn on and the glow plug should warm up, but only with about uh, 30 watts. I see a tiny bit of smoke. I don't think it's going to be picked up on camera. Definitely not enough to ignite uh, diesel. I'm still figuring out exactly what I'm going to do about the fan, but for right now, to test it, I am going to connect the fan through a 30 watt light bulb, and we will see how fast it turns, and then we'll go from there. This light bulb should light up and the fan should spin when I connect this battery. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Three, two, one. I'm going to assume based on that test that we do not want to feed this the full 12 volts. I'm going to do it for a second here just to see what's going to happen, but I assume this fan is going to turn at uh, warp speed. It's probably gonna be a little bit ridiculous. I'm gonna connect just one of these little guys here, just so hopefully it cuts the, hmm, 
Never mind, Joel. They won't understand. Just do it. Okay, that's too much. That is too much. Full voltage, full wattage is way too much. <laughs> no heat sensor connected, the glow plug is not connected, and neither is the fan motor. What I have here, folks, is basically a proof of concept. If this actually works, I will try to tidy it up some so that it will make more sense to you guys because I'm sure some of you will understand what I'm doing here, but some of you probably won't. So any electronics nerds will 100% understand. But So when I turn the switch on, all you need to know is the power goes through the fan and the light bulb. You'll see the light bulb come on when I turn the switch on and the fan will also start spinning. What I'm gonna try to do is get the fuel dripping just a tiny little bit with the fan running and then I am going to touch the glow plug on and hopefully it starts. I'm pretty sure it will, but I don't know. Okay, so the fan is gonna be running and then the fuel all right, we have a drip. I don't know if you guys can see that, but we do have a bit of a drip there. So let's see if we touch the glow plug, if we hear it fire up or see any smoke. All right, I didn't, we might have too much air in the system because I didn't see any smoke. We'll give it a second, we'll try it again. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, smoke. We have ignition, no more power. <laughs> All we have is a battery. Yeah. All right. That seems pretty smoky, so I don't think the fan's going fast enough. But it lit. Okay. Okay, we're gonna have to replace that. The dripper thing here is leaking a little bit. Not sure if you guys will be able to see this or not. 138, 139. 140. I've proved now that it can work, so what I'm gonna do now, I think, is actually pull it all back apart and try to do it in a somewhat tidy way with a few switches so that we can, yeah, maybe even put it outside and run it overnight, pumping heat into my house. That would be really cool. Every time I think I'm ready, I put my tools away and then realize that I need to do something else. And then I get all my tools back out, do another thing and then put my tools away and then realize that I've got to do another thing. So maybe this time I won't put away all my tools and it'll be done. And then my tools will be left out for a week. I have been messing around with this for a little while now. Hopefully it is a little bit uh, easier for me to explain to you guys. I now have a three speed fan, not one speed, not two speeds, three speeds on this fan. And I also have a glow plug switch. So I'm gonna explain the switch to you for the glow plug first because that is pretty straightforward. I've got these two wires coming from the heater and I've got alligator clamps on them. They both go to the glow plug, but I've got this switch in line. So when I flip this switch, the glow plug is either on or off depending on what position it's in. So I'm going to check, see here. Okay, so that is turned on. So the O is for off which might seem obvious to you guys, but sometimes off is shorting and sometimes off is a broken circuit. So 
And now I can kind of explain to you guys my three speed fan setup. Quite simply, if you have a circuit in series, the more components that you add, the higher the resistance will be, the more resistance to flow you will have. If you have a circuit in parallel, the more components you add, the lower the resistance will be, and the higher the amperage flow will be through that circuit. So although it might seem very counterintuitive, and a lot of people are gonna fight with me in the comments about this, the more light bulbs I add in parallel, the less resistance there will be to the heater. What we have is the blue wire is always connected to the motor. The red wire, however, goes through to this switch. When this switch is off, there is no power going through anything. When this switch is on, the power goes through this red wire and then it attaches to the bottom of these three light bulbs. Now, depending, this is where it gets a little bit confusing if you're not confused already. Depending on how I have these switches positioned, that will determine if the power travels through one light bulb, two light bulbs, or three light bulbs. So right now, these two switches are turned off. So this switch is off and this switch is off. So the power will come through this switch, through this red wire, and it will get to this light bulb, but because this switch isn't on, it won't actually go through that light bulb. It just goes along this wire to the next one. Because this switch is off, it won't go through that one. It just goes along the bottom to this one. And all of the power will just go through this one light bulb. So when I turn this switch on, you're gonna see this light bulb come on and the fan will turn quite slow. As you guys can probably hear, that is turning quite slow. Now, because I have this as a parallel circuit, when I turn this switch on, power will flow through this light bulb as well, and the fan will actually pick up speed. The, the Both bulbs will be dimmer. This bulb will actually be dim, but the fan will pick up speed. So just listen. Pretty obvious, right? Now, the power is going through these two bulbs, but still not through this one. But if I turn this switch on, once again, we are gonna pick up speed and all of the bulbs will become a little bit more dim. There you have it. If I wanna turn the whole thing off, I kill this switch, all three bulbs go off and the fan goes off. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Basically what is going on here is that these bulbs are wired in a parallel circuit. The way that I have it laid out here probably makes that pretty hard to see, but it is wired in a parallel configuration. And so when I flip these switches all on and the power is going through all three bulbs, that actually reduces the resistance, more power can flow. And so the fan actually turns faster. A whole bunch of people in my last drip feed video recommend that I use a needle valve and I have a needle valve here. The reason why I didn't use it is because it's gonna be a little bit tricky to attach the fuel lines, but I'm going to struggle through and get it done for you guys. If you're interested in picking up your very own diesel heater, there will be an affiliate link as well as a discount code in the description below. You might want to use this heater for heating your house, your greenhouse, a wheelbarrow, or a number of other things. Either way, I suggest that you use the ECU and your fuel pump. Footage that will get, never get used. Footage that will never get used. Footage that never gets used. That will work. I've made two pieces like this. This is where the small fuel line will go on. And I'm going to try to drill and tap the back side of this so that these things can thread in. One of them's a pipe thread, the other one is, I don't know.
I've made a couple of adapters for this needle valve thing. It was kind of a struggle. I didn't have the right taps and that's why this one's all marred up because I basically just had to force it in there with a little bit of glue and hope that it doesn't leak. This one was actually 1 8 NPT so I was able to get that sorted out very easily but one of them was not a tap that I had. So. I hate it when I think I'm recording and I'm not. I think we've got a halfway decent number. I've got 105 drips a minute somewhere around there and we've got 25 perts per million and I think it's making a lot of heat. Yeah, we're uh, This is saying, oh yeah, this is saying 230 Fahrenheit or 230 Celsius. I think I'm gonna wait till tomorrow to install this on the house. It is just before midnight. So I think we're gonna shut it down. That is my diesel heater. And if you guys wanna see it actually running, hooked up to my house, then you're gonna have to tune in for the next video because I have run out of time. I wanna try to get this video out on Saturday so that I can do another one on Sunday. So sorry to cut this one a little bit short. I think probably most of you are satisfied with seeing this thing run on a bench, but I have indeed hooked this thing up to my house. And in the next video, we are going to actually run this thing and see what kind of issues we run into. We're gonna monitor the temperature, the carbon monoxide, and uh, check on the fuel rate and a bunch of other things. That is going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to leave a thumbs up on the video and get involved in the comment section. I'll see you guys next time.